Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another breakdown. Today, we are looking at, I think this was a Super Bowl commercial. Might have been 2017, 2018, shot by Patrick Scola. I don't think we have done any of Patrick's work on the podcast or on the channel, so this is going to be new. It's a really good commercial when it came out, uh, very popular, and it looks great. And we're going to analyze some of the things that make it look great and how they fit into the framework and what little tricks that we're doing to get it to look this way. And when I say we are getting it to look this way, uh, I have nothing to do with this. This is just me trying to understand what Patrick is doing so that hopefully we can do it and make everybody's work a little bit better. So let's go straight into it. We don't make this thing too long. This is the spot that we are doing. You take a little look at it. We're on go-karts. It's kids, soft and light. Pops is here. He's supporting his daughter. She's going to go racing. Here we go. And we're off to the races. Backlit. Little, uh, what was that? A little matte box. Uh, filter glare there. And here we are. More backlit stuff. This way's backlit. Looking at their faces backlit. Everything is backlit. There's drama. There's water because it makes it cooler. And you get the idea. All right, we're racing down the hill. It looks really nice, especially the close-ups when you cut in. All right, you can't really tell the difference because the action is so quick. And because, well, this is basically why we're looking at it. So you can see just how quick it cuts. So the lighting changes that we're going to be talking about, when you see it in the ad all put together, it nobody notices, right? There's no chance that you're going to see why it's always backlit and be like, wait a second. I thought she was racing this way, but in fact, she's going this way. So no, that's what we're looking at today, right? Uh, fairly straightforward. But... We're going to look at how, yeah, you go wide on the back, uh, you go backlit on the wide stuff, but then as we go in, do we change the light? How do we move it? Where do we bounce from? Do we soften it off? How do we deal with the shadows? Because it's not going to look like this, right? This is like your classic sun just out of the shot, backlight wide frame. This is what we're going for. You can see uh, if we switch this way, you see this little thing, uh, what do they call that? The gate flare or something where it cuts off there. And there's a name for this, and I don't know it, or I can't remember what it is. But this is what you're going for in a classically backlit wide scenario. You are going for shooting into all this shadow, shadow all in here, shadow all here. The sun is not in the shot, right? Because the sun is just up here hanging out. You want the sun not in the shot because then it creates these little tiny edges of light, right? This is where the interest is. The interest is in the edges. And then this all stuff is all backlit dark, down, because we really just want the contrast. You want the variance to keep things exciting and interesting and to create depth. And here, in terms of composition, I mean, we have the camera moving down uh, and to the left this way, but just look at the composition here. You got road stretched out. It goes around the corner, so you can't see where it goes. Again, everybody backlit, nice, creates some depth. You got multiple layers in here. You got one first row, second row, the little guys and gals there getting ready to race. Then you got people in the background. You got all the trees and everything. Backlit is key, right? So backlit here, you think to yourself as you're doing the schedule, okay, we're going to be backlit for the wide stuff. I want that to be low sun, but you don't want the sun here in the shot, right? Because that's going to throw out all of our contrast ratios. This big shadow will be covering up all of our racers. So you won't get this long effect on the shadows on the racers because this will all be in shadow because it will be behind the tree and it'll be creating all these problems and just make everything real flat. And we don't want flat. We want interest. We want contrast. We want intrigue. Uh, so apart from just getting the light right, it's also getting the schedule right here. You know, you don't want it to, you don't want the light coming from over here. And when I say over here, I mean behind the camera, right? This is not just left of the camera. This is behind the camera. You don't want all the light coming in this way because then this is going to be all front lit and then you're not going to get any of these cool little edges. There's going to be very little darkness, the trees. It's going to look like Christmas time on the trees back there. It's just not a good look. You don't want to do that. So sun just out of the shot and you can get there on the day or sorry, on the tech scout, you get there, you bring out Artemis, you bring out Sunseeker, and you line it up and you go, okay, the sun is going to be just out of frame at whatever time this is. Let's say this is four o'clock. So let's be turning over here, uh, three and then we'll just roll all the way until four o'clock. Right, so you got 45 minutes to get the move down. You got uh, some time just in case we want to shuffle kids around if the agent or the client doesn't like the look of this kid or doesn't like the look of the helmet or the go-kart or whatever. You're thinking ahead going, there's probably going to be some changes and then line up the shot and everything like that. So you're buying yourself a little bit of time here. Everything backlit, get those little edges. But if they're racing this way and we've already established that they're going down this road, they're going to be front lit. And we want in the boards that we're looking at, there's a bunch of uh, you know, front on shots. 
And those front-on shots, if we scroll through, like this, this kid is in line. Or he's at the start line, right? The race hasn't started yet. We go from there to like this look. But look at how soft this light is, right? Look at the transition from light over here, across his face to shadow over here. Look at how soft that shadow is there. This is not hard front lit, right? Like this guy in the background is hard front lit. So what's going on here is Patrick's just saying, well, who cares? Like, let's just, because we can't see the ground here, let's soften off the sunlight coming this way. Let's put a big neg over here and make it dark. He hasn't gone too crazy though, because there's not too much crunch. Like if you look across his hands, it's pretty even exposure across his hands from left to right. So you haven't got the, you know, it's not a big 20 by right next to him creating really deep shadows. But if you go back to the wide, let's see, this looks like this kid, right? So magically from one frame to the next, his helmet just gets popped on. And look at how harsh this is, right? Harsh backlight is okay. Harsh front light, not as good, right? So you want to come back here and thing you got to be careful for when you're going to do this softening routine as you're going on closer shots is you, you don't want to be able to see the ground because if you can see the ground, then the trick is up because you'll be able to see the exposure difference between where the frame of whatever this is, whether this is quarter grid, uh, it looks stronger than like a highlight or something like that, or a half soft frost. So you're going to be able to see the difference on the ground. You're, you'll be able to see the shadow of the frame, which sometimes like if you're doing uh, what am I thinking of? Something like NCIS uh, Los Angeles or NCIS or one of those things where people don't really care. Uh, I don't know if they don't care or they just, just through sheer scheduling, they have to sometimes just leave those frames in. A lot of the times you'll see people on overhead frames or frames like this where you might see the ground on a wider shot. You'll put a little bit of like branch or camo on the sides of it so it makes it blend in a little bit easier. But a lot of times you'll just see the hard edge of the frame and that will tell you, oh, they're just softening off the light here. So here, because we don't see the ground, there really is no giveaway. And nobody would ever be able to tell. Going from this to softened light, no one's ever going to tell. Same thing with this kid. Well, this one, you can't actually see the ground, right? So look at the exposure. First of all, this is probably the frame right in here, which this looks like it might be the go-kart. But this thing is probably the hard frame. This guy is getting hit with hard light. This is what hard light looks like. This is not what hard light looks like. And here, oh, it's reflective. It's going to be a problem. Well, not if you put dulling spray on it. Just spray it. Shh. You got that spray, by the way. Shh. International. Shh. Spraying. Uh, you just spray it with some dulling spray and you get rid of your giant frame in there. And you can see just how hot it is back there. But if we come out, let's see if we come out all together. Come out of here. Again, look at much like the last time we did one of these breakdowns. This white thing here, barely getting up there right? It's nowhere near up the top there, nowhere near clipping. And this guy, what is he going to be at? Like this somewhere in there, right? Really, really low levels. Uh, let's go back to the big screen. Come on, big screen. There we go. Okay. So really, really low levels. And again, really, really soft because it's front lit. If we're going to front light, uh, might as well make it soft and make it somewhat pleasing. And then you can always, again, bring in the neg and then you decide the contrast that you like. You decide how deep into the shadows you can go. And if you're there on set and you want to make sure everything is hunky-dory and you don't want to use false color because you're too cool, uh, you can always just, again, take a meter reading and figure it out and then go in the shadows here, take a meter reading there. And you're probably going to want this and this on the meters closer than these two ratios, right? Because this is really hot sun. And we're trying to avoid that. Not only are we avoiding the harsh shadows, but just the contrast difference as well, because we want to bring those values closer together so that the fall off is more natural. Well, not more natural because this is really natural, but more pleasing, I should say, right? More pleasing is the word. Okay. So from there, uh, then we go to dad along the sidelines, right? Proud dad. He, son, I mean, this is classic framework stuff. And this is classic framework where choose your own contrast levels, right? Like choose your own adventure books. If you were born in the eighties, this sun is out of the shot. And then, well, it should be over here, right? Sun over here. And you can tell cause it's down here on him down here on his fingers. And then what's, what's happening here is that if we want more level, right? Say we want, uh, this over here, 
Well, all we're going to do is, well, there's actually a few different ways here. We could do it. So you got direct sun, right? But let's say you don't live in an area where there's nice, uh, softer sun. Say you're in Australia, right? Harsh. It is going to beat down on top of you. You're going to have to do a few different things to this image to make it look like this. Number one, you're going to have to get the position of the sun right, for sure. Position of the sun, most important thing. Out of the frame, right? Because if it's here, well, now you cannot do our little tricks of balancing exposure because this is going to be so hot and the whole sky is going to be all blown out. Uh, you know, even if you're working with 14 stops of dynamic range, it's still going to be really, really hard to balance a sun in the middle of the frame with a face, right? And even though we're keeping things way, way low, let's go back here and look. Uh, where is he? He is this chasm down here of darkness. The sky, look at how low the sky levels are. It's a sunny day. We just saw that it was a bright sunny day. And this is really, really low and really, really warm. Look at how warm that is. You know, this is, we're going for warmth here. Uh, from, so if we go back, let's go back to the big one. Let's see, come on, big one. There we go. So if we're talking framework, exterior, especially on something like this, a close up, uh, we'll just talk about the lighting first of all, and, and the schedule. Again, we can do this. This could be in the morning time because we can't see the ground. These are the ones you look at in the boards and go, okay, because it's so compact, we can shift this to later in the day. This can be a completely different location on a completely different day. As long as it's behind him, it will match with the stuff from the previous wide. And we know the contrast levels that we're after. So we matching the contrast. Um, so as long as you get that, you're okay, right? You don't see any ground, you see nothing. We can soften the hell out of this thing because we are so tight. So let's imagine that this is not like a, uh, there's not a high cloud. We're gonna have to soften it off because this level of shadow, right, on the shoulder, which is, this is also sort of coming from nowhere. Maybe it's over here, the sun, right? And it's just backlighting him. So that's why you're getting this other shoulder. But if it is just a full sun and it's a bright sunny day, you're gonna have to soften this off to make it look like this. So what you would do, in this situation where you're so tight, you could get away with a 12 by 12, maybe even smaller than a 12 by 12, depending on the lens that you're on. You put a 12 by 12, you, you put it on, put the stands on either side of the image, so stand over here, stand over here. You got your 12 by 12 of highlight or of half soft frost or quarter grid. Let's say this is quarter grid, even though that's pretty thick, like the thicker, it's not that bad because you can't see the ground. So you have nothing to deal with except sky back there. And here, in this situation, identifying what we can't control. We can't control the level of the sky. So everything has to be balanced to the level of the sky. If you want to create this mood, we have to tame the levels of the sky. So that means we need a lot of level in our area to get a dark image, right? That's the tricky part that it's hard for people to wrap their minds around that. But sometimes you need lots and lots of level to be able to bring things way, way down because you're balancing to what you can't control. And here, because we can't control the sky, we need to, you know, like if you're just gonna set this shot up, you come here, you set the lens, you just quickly, without even any ND or anything like that, you can just roll back and forth on the iris on the lens and you determine, okay, this is the aperture that we want, or this is the darkness that we want, and say that is uh, T11. Well, then you ND back to wide open so you can get this nice fall off. And you know exactly how many stops you have to make up for on his face, depending on where you want that and in the shadows. Okay, so identify what you can't control. It's the sky. Overhead, knock the, knock the harshness out of the sun. That takes care of this. But then, how do we get level back onto his face? Well, because this is backlit and the sun is over here, right? It's going through the 12 by 12, right? And so it's knocking the level that's coming through the 12 by onto his shoulders way down. But outside, positioned outside of the 12 by 12 is a 12 by 12 of ultra bounce or uh, bleached muslin or something like that where the sun is not going through the 12 by 12 it's going just to the side bouncing in here and then bouncing back at his face and now this the bounce here becomes the key light right even though the sun is the key light just to think about it the the bounce becomes the key light and that means we're going to want that key light upstage so that means you're going to want the bounce between the talent and the background so over here right because that's how you get this little light look and then dark over here. We want sun going this way, bouncing off the 12 by or the eight by or whatever, depends on the size of the shot, giving you this level. Then this level is determined by how much neg is over here. How dark and how big we go with a neg determines that look. So you're getting sun going into bounce. It's going through the 12 by for our little edge. It's coming back 
for our bounce. Now, if you wanted to brighten this up a little bit, if you wanted a different look than this whole commercial, or if, you know, word comes back from the booth that, uh, sorry, it's a little bit dark where the agency can't actually see the person and they want to because they're scared, they're running scared from your artistic vision that you have, uh, then all you do is you get more out of the bounce. You just bring it closer. Or here, you go slightly less on less heavy on the diffusion. So maybe you switch to a, to a highlight, right? Then this is going to be hotter. You're going to be able to get more juice out of this because you can bring the bounce closer or less is coming through. You can put the bounce closer and use the light that is coming through the, the half soft frost or the highlight to then really ping him. And then here you can open it up by moving the neg back. Or if you really want to go nightly news, you know, you could put up another little bit of fill in here, something white or something lighter than just a big giant neg. Okay. But now we talk about the composition again, facing that way to camera because the light is coming this way. So he's not looking this way to camera, looking into the darkness. You don't want that. You want this little tiny edge which separates him from the background. Then you've got layers, face, guy with glasses, old mate here, lady in the background. He's also the tallest thing in the frame, right? We don't want some ogre behind here, some Shrek looking person. You know, this is, we want all eyes on our man. So everything pointing to him, shallow depth of field, all of that stuff. Okay. From there, we're going to do one more uh, I'll just pick one out. One of my favorites here. Let's see an idea. We didn't even really look at the close-ups or anything like that. Sort of got distracted. Might have to come back and do more on this one. I just don't want these videos to be 30 minutes long. It takes forever to watch. Okay. Uh, well, let's do this one. Okay. So this one, this is harsh. This is direct sun, right? This is what direct sun looks like. Compare that to what we saw here and you can immediately spot the difference, right? Your eye gets really used to seeing soft light in the daytime versus that's what hard light looks like. And here, okay, uh, for some reason, we've decided that this is going to be the look for this shot, right? We're not gonna follow the others, even though we could have. We could have done the whole soften of the light, but for some reason, Patrick has decided not to do that this time. You can actually see the neg in the helmet there a little bit, which is adding all of this contrast. It's not gonna look like this. If you just show up, you're not gonna get that level of contrast on a day exterior. Uh, for lighting, again, it is a little bit, you know, it's fronty here, but it's fronty side. So the same things are still happening. It's still looking this way. Key still over here. You're getting that. This is like the Andre uh, soft hob method that we talk so much about. This is uh, soft, well, not even soft, light up there, dark with a little slash. Uh, let's keep going. What else we got? Backlit kid. Now, all of a sudden, now we're doing this shot second, right? Second in the day after we've done the wide, after we've done that wide shot that we just looked at, the lighting is not near as good. That's a little bit shit. Even though these people are all edged out nicely, what's happened is we are probably, the sun now is behind those trees that we were looking at before, which means all of these people uh, are down. They have to either be fake lit, which you can see there's a, like a little something coming onto them, but it's just nowhere near the level that we got in this wide, right? Feels a lot different. Okay, we go from there, where we go backlight, nice little swooping move, backlight, backlight, side light here, right? Again, we've planned the day around shooting into the shadow, even when we're shooting into a moving car, right? This little transition from light to shadow in the background, all this stuff in shadow means you immediately look at the big giant gold helmet, right? Because it's lit up. If this whole thing was lit up like a Christmas tree, all back here, all this was lit up. There's no interest. It's really hard to pull things out from the background if everything is the same level. Let's see the scopes on this bad boy. Oh, Father Christmas, look at this. Nothing, nothing above, what is that, like 38? This is way, printed way, way, way down. Now, did they shoot it like this? Hard to say. Probably would have been something, let's see. On the day, let's see what that looks like. I mean, even that is, I mean, it's really, really low. Even, even cranking it up like that. Let's just sell this stuff back to where it was. We can have another look. Okay, we go to full screen one more time. Oh, bang, look at me. Check me out. So we go from light over here on this side of the face, no backlight or anything like that, to presto, changeo, soft light, sun behind, sun back here. And this is the same method that we just did on the dude, right? The sun is out of the shot. We can soften this if we want, much smaller now because we're much tighter. And then we take the sunlight back here that is doing this, and it's going to come away from the diffusion.
It's gonna hit some sort of bounce and it's gonna come this way at them. We're not gonna, you know, put two on each side and just flatten this out. There's still, you can feel the shadows going across it. And this is completely separate, completely different light, completely different angle from that shot. But they go cut back, back and forth. You add a little bit of atmosphere in there, a little bit of wind, lady shaking her head, and then magically we go from backlight to backlight. Right, nice and low to the ground. This kid, also backlight, right? Sun over here, bounce back at him. Neg over here, you can feel the shadow difference over here. And then we're looking into backlight again back there and using as much atmosphere as we possibly can. Nice and tight, nice and tight. And then backlit, water, backlit. You can feel how softened it is here, right? You can feel the contrast. As soon as you're able to spot it, like look at the, the harshness of the shadows on the ground. Then when we cut around here, soft, soft, skid out. I like it. Overhead, down again, really soft. Now you can tell we're much later in the day now because there's no shadows anywhere, right? This is the, this is why you would shoot. And this is why a lot of car stuff shoots at magic hour is because you don't have any harsh lights. So you get nothing but nice, soft shadows here. Nice, soft transition, even in a, a helmet like that, where you can see all the details in there. It's nice and soft. Come around, harder light, backlight, 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 harsh. Uh, there was one more I wanted to do. What was it? It's the actual car shot. Oh, this is a good one, right? Like this is the contrast. This is the look. You got harsh coming over here, bouncing back in this way. So you're not getting any sandwiches, right? The, the sun sandwich would be backlight here, bounce from this side. That would be the sandwich because you got light and light. But here we got backlight. Then we got bounce this side, go this way, neg over here. Then this is the sun wrap, right? Because you're wrapping the sun around as opposed to going this way and smooshing it back at him. Uh, let's see if we can get to the car shot. Where is it? This is a good one, right? Sun over here, out of shot, right? The formula starts to really play out here. And then this, again, if you want it to look brighter, you can either wrap more around locally. So you can put a bounce over here and you can get more level on this side of the face versus the background. You're just controlling the contrast in every single area. Background, foreground, the shadow side here. If you want less of this, you just bring in, pull out the neg or bring in the, the bounce just to add a little bit something back. And then from here, we are at our product shot. And let's see, we got our CG car here. Car is not even there. Then we've got no sun in the shot because sun in the shot ruins all of our contrast. No shadows on the ground because we want soft light for all of these nice little reflections in the sky. Let's cue the fake birds in the VFX. If we're gonna build a car, let's build the birds too. Make it a nice wispy clouds in the sky. And you got yourself a car out here. Boom, she's happy. She won't be driving that Audi. Uh, Pops has got the helmet. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about the go-kart here? They just leave the go-kart, right? That's a one and done. Anyway, okay. And we are out, I think. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's a look. Again, really tight. The tighter on the frames you can go, the more you can massage those levels like this, the more you can really decide where you're gonna come with the light. And if you're in a commercial where you're thinking, man, I don't think people are really gonna notice that I'm changing the light all the time, that the light's coming from different directions, nobody cares. Basically the rule of thumb is make every shot look good and then get somebody else to cut them together. <laughs> you live to fight another day. Uh, that's the look. Cool. Okay. Many thanks for checking it out and be sure to check back for more. I'm going to try and do a couple of these every week. We'll see how it goes, but that's the plan for now. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other commercials that you want to see uh, broken down or questions about the framework or how it works, or uh, maybe specific areas, whether it's the backlight, whether it's the wrap, whether it's the sandwich, those things like that, just let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.